what is the ultimate point of desire when other people have to suffer for it? Hello! It's Gateway to Geats time, babies! And hey, would you look at that? It's a Kwa episode this week. I hope nothing bad happens to him. And hey, this really is a, a Kwa focused episode. Um, but we got a, we got our main character. We got we got that fucker over there. Uh, so Ace spends most of the time just kind of like talking to other people, just trying to get some information, and ultimately kind of diving into the revelation he's had about. Like, oh shit, I, whoa, things are fucked up with me. I need more information. Uh, and ultimately, he, while talking to the producer, he kind of gets told like, hey, your mom became the goddess of the desire to kind of protect you. Um, because uh, it's implied and very much like, it, when things are hinted this way, it's what happens. We've kind of seen this in the show so far. That... Ace is a baby of a future person and a past person, and that's kind of fucked up because it's just like, oh boy, a lot of weird stuff. Um, and because of that, he, he, he's realized he's like the recipient of a lot of shit. Like, you're not supposed to exist, all those kind of different kinds of stuff, and like your mom became a goddess in order to kind of protect you and keep you safe. And he just kind of, like, stews in it. And it's like, Jesus Christ, what is my life? Meanwhile, his friend, Kewa, is wrapped up in some fucking bullshit. Wrapped up in the game. His sister's wrapped up in it. It's chaos and pandemonium. Because the entire city that they're in is lifted up into the heavens. And the game this week is basically, hey, stand on some colors. We're gonna pick one. If you're standing on the color that gets picked, you're dropped. You know what this season's really doing? It's showing us the true hell uh, scape that is Mario Party. Honestly and truly, if there's anything we can take from Common Rider Geats is that Mario Party is tantamount to hellish torture. I'm kidding, and Mario Party's a fun game, but this is, it's a Mario Party game. That's what this is. Um. And it's just all kinds of fucked. And they're dealing with the thing as best as they can. And meanwhile, Kawa's in the background whenever Ace is having, like, those little discussions. And he's just listening in. And he's just kind of, like, putting the whole picture together. And, and all this kind of stuff, right? And the big thing, the big takeaway we need to get is that the, the Goddess of Desire functions basically... By taking the failed desires and using all that kind of, like, spiritual energy and putting it into, like, the big one desire that wins and fulfilling it. Which, like, yeah, sure, that's kind of what we've, what's been implied, especially with, like, uh, the Jumatos and the, 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 the uh, fuel kind of fertilizer that's the word i'm looking for all that kind of stuff and it, it, it tracks everything makes sense it lines up but really this like putting it out there one plus one equals two uh breaks kawa a little bit and he just kind of like lays into this whole situation of basically why do other people have to suffer why did i have to suffer why did my parents have to die and for what uh, a fucking wish and, and he kind of lays it all out there and it's just like this is dumb this is bullshit that so much people have to suffer for the sake of one person again iterating that continuous idea that uh, you need to work together you need to be working with other people in order to accomplish what you should and you shouldn't rely on these like big dumb wish things right and he rants at Ace on this. Ace lets him do it. Goes, lets is just like, yep, yep. Now I'm taking this because he sees his friends hurting, you know. And he's like, he's fucking right to an extent, you know. It's, it's just a lot of fucked up shit because like, Buffa in and Ned Sparrow are both going like, yeah, no, this is fucked up. We're gonna use this fucked up for our own game, but this is fucked up. And Kawa's just here 
the same way she's been wanting this whole time. He just wants people to be safe. He wants them to, like, come, like, he wants people to be safe, and he wants peace. And this is basically a giant middle finger for everything he believes in. So, he's pissed. He's, the game's going down again. And K.O. is just like, ah, what the fuck, it, fuck all this shit. He goes off, fights the bad guys. And he's doing all that stuff. Meanwhile, civilians are still in trouble. And one girl gets pushed into a corner, figuratively, and literally pushes a man to his death. And that's when K.O. is just like, that's it. That's, nope, we're done. We're done. Fuck you. Fuck all of this. And he just starts letting loose. And just trying to destroy everything. He's just, no, no. Buffa shows up, however, and just beats him too. Buffa one-ups Kawa. Kawa's in one of the holes, about to fall to his demise. And Buffa's just like, hey, fuck you. The, the world pisses on people, and I'm going to piss on you. And he pushes him over. As Kawa falls to his demise. Fuck you, Buffa. Fuck you. Hell in a handbasket. Desire at the harm of someone else it, it has been shown of so as something that needs to happen. But ultimately, Kawa is there to say no to that very concept. That everyone deserves a chance at happiness. And realizing all of the stuff shakes ace to his like shakes ace he's like all of this is fucked up and all he wants to do is just re stop reincarnating it's layers upon layers of monkey paw upon monkey paw you know because he k while re not k while ace realizes he's kind of taken so much and realistically, he, like, he's still around. He benefited from Kawa's parents dying. He benefited from so much, and he's just still here, and it's kind of fucked up, you know? And it's not even something, it's not even because of something he did. I mean, eventually, yes, what he did has an impact, but it's because of what his mother did initially. And now he's just the beneficiary of it. This show has gone from talking about desires once and how one can accomplish that to generational wealth and the inherent flaw in selfish desires. Oh yeah, also there's plant for this episode. <laughs> hey! Do you like these videos? Do you like me? You can always uh, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, give it a comment. You can also go follow me on other platforms such as Twitch, where I stream Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays. You can also follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at Boingo underscore writer. You can also, also go follow me on Tumblr. I post a lot of things there. But in the meantime, in the mean being green time, it's time for comments. First up, uh, in their combo, Fish Pop. I and apparently many others expected that twist at the end of the episode. Question is, how will Ace react? Yeah, the the whole big twist of like, oh, you're the the child of the goddess and all that kind of stuff is just like the the Desire Grand Prix is a monkey paw. We can, I think we can all agree is like. Every single desire that they have ever granted has backfired on the people that they granted it to. Because I guarantee you, Ace's mom was probably just like, I want to have a fucking kid. And then future person was like, I can give you a kid. Oh, the kid's fucked up because we're different. So like future people. It's like, uh, okay, I'll become the goddess of desire to fix this. You know? Ace going like, ah oh, man, I'd, let me be in every Desire Grand Piece till I can fucking solve this issue. Alright, cool. Here you go. <laughs> Your life is fucked now. You know? 
it, it, it's like it, it's a continuous interesting idea especially like there's also like neon's dad there's a there ha there's a monkey ball there. there's a monkey ball everywhere and all these different kinds of things and it's just really just it is really just showing like hey be careful what you wish for Next up, from Sakura Tora, I just want to say, your reviews are one of the ones I look forward to the most. Speculating, deeper dives into messaging, and what Geese is trying to say makes it enjoyable on another level. I don't think there's many YouTubers that approach Common Rider from that angle, and there's a bunch of nuance in this year's Rider that I think may fly over some, so I really appreciate it. I... Thank you! Thank you so much for this, because... I have always been a person who's, who, when talking about Kamen Rider, the first thing I talk about is usually, like, the theme. Doubles memory, you know, it, it owes is moderation of wants, uh, for a friendship, all these different little things. Like, these, these seasons have a major thematic element, and they explore it and all that kind of stuff. And it's Kamen Rider. It's not subtle about it, Right? Like, the very first Kamen Rider, Ichigo, was a Japanese man who was bastardized and made into a monster by Nazis in the attempt to have a fucking, like, soldier. Like, it's not subtle about where it's coming from. And every Kamen Rider season's been like that, and I don't hear people talk about it that way. It's always about the action, it's always about the surface level plot, and I wanted to be the change to change that, you know? I wanted to be the person going like, no, these these shows do have meaning. There is metaphor here. And the fact that at least one other person, uh, uh, one person appreciates what I, what I am attempting to do makes a lot of this worth it. So thank you, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart. Next up, from Toa Nui. I love that we started this episode with Ace trying to hit Baroba with a monster corpse, and I'm a little disappointed that she uh, seemed unfazed by it. Or, on another note, uh, from what I could tell, it seems that Dad blamed himself, so I'm guessing he didn't pay the ransom, and my second crackpot theory is probably bunk, although now that I say that, it will probably be true. On a buff note, I, it, it could just be from subs I use, but it actually looks to me like his goals are technically a bit more noble than they first appeared, considering he is going to be, uh, he's going from removing the symptoms, a whole common rider to directly cutting out the disease, somehow getting shadier, uh, the somehow sh getting shadier all the time, DGP, and was just going along with Baroba for convenience, which it seems he is probably one or two episodes away from cutting all ties with her. And speaking of the DGP, I'm starting to wonder if they are some kind of cult, considering that they were dressed and acted the way that created the desired goddess statue. I'm also wondering if Misume was actually a navigator, considering that the head of the maybe cult seems to be intrigued that she possessed the power to create miracles. Sorry if I seem disjointed. Hey, disjointedness is the name of the game around these parts. Um, you know, with the way, kind of like, because a lot of the DGP is structured around like a reality TV show, so showbiz and all that kind of stuff. Calling the DGP a cult, probably not that far off. Um, you know, a lot of this is 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 just. Bleh. I'm definitely thinking Buffa is less. Than, Buffa is going from like noble goals with shitty attitude to. All right, buddy, you can't just commit, you just can't commit war crimes because you're right. Like, th there is levels from what Buffa's been doing, you know? And I I kind of agree with the, uh, the dad thing. I think when he made the wish for Neon, it was in a moment of pain. And it was just like, I don't want to suffer through this again. But later on, he realizes, wow, I really... I really fucked her over. I fucked up this human person. So that's why he's so gung-ho about letting her be in the DGP and letting her fight. It's... It's fucked, man. The, psychologically, the DGP has done more as a fucking villain 
than a lot of villains in Kamen Rider, I think. Like, oh, because, like, look at back at some of these guys, and it's just like, oh, I want to take over the world, I want power. And the DG Beach is here going like, yeah, we don't care about power, we're from a post-scarcity society, we don't have a want for anything, we're just bored? And that's kind of fucking terrifying. Like, my guys, you're, you're bored, so you torment hundreds upon thousands of individuals, killing them for sport in order to give one dude a fucking wish? Jesus Christ. And there's, it wasn't even like, oh, we'll turn this bad situation into a fun game of like, oh, there's these monsters and we got to beat them. Might as well do something with that. No, 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 no. You made up the monsters. There were no monsters. You made them. That's double fucked, yo. That is, that is so fucked. It, it is, it is so indicative of like modern showbiz of like idol culture and fan culture and the way the audience views celebrities and the way that agencies and uh, uh, studios will purposely set up situations to abuse those celebrities and all these different kinds of things. It's a fascinating look at that kind of a thing. And finally, from Esconde. Even though the attack got blocked, Ace still sent a powerful message when he kicked uh, the Bishop Jumato flying towards Baroba. The despair of losing Akari, leaving him broken, makes you feel for Kyose. But man, the conclusion he reached with Niram's offer and the Rish really makes... Uh, makes him, as you said, a rap bastard. Neon uh, talking with her mom and lashing out uh, the lashing out from the ladder after her memories were recovered was heartbreaking, even more when Neon leaves saying she isn't even running away because this wasn't her home in the first place. I like that the show's given Ace a kinship towards Neon since the reveal, which is further from the fact that he's also a child of the goddess, even if he doesn't know it at this episode yet, him calling out Kyun for his lack of action when he's supposed to be Neon's supporter, and calling out Michinaga for him siding with Boroba were great. I love that the piano version of Neon's character song that kicked in with uh, when Kyun tore up the letter and started speaking from the heart. Their team up was awesome, and I really hope Neon gets Heat the Laser Rise, uh, Raise Riser. Uh, that Lance Axe weapon it gives her, uh, it gives her is sick. Can't wait for the next episode, KO I'll focus again, and the preview images even show him command twin form I am hype. Boy, did that show get did this episode give us some KWA. <laughs> I I I think is gonna be coming back. Not next episode, but the episode after. It's It's interesting how looking at like how these two few episodes have been humanizing Ace by connecting him to his friends is interesting. Because, like, he connects to Neon being... feeling like they are unnatural forces in the world, that they shouldn't exist. And that kind of connection and longing for people to connect to. And he s sees himself as a connection for Neon, but understands that Kyun is a different one and she needs both. And in this episode, with Ace kind of realizing his place and how the DGP has just been operating and ultimately being a plaything of it just as much as Kawa is as an average civilian is interesting. It's it's it, it it's it really humanizes a person who from the start has been a little inhuman. You know? And I think that's I think that's cool. I wish Kawa was able to get more out of this. Because right now he's dead. And can't do nothing. It's like, come on. Has Kawa not suffered enough? And I just gotta say, the actress for Nan killing it just a whole nine yards really nailed that kind of like, oh, I'm unloved and nobody wants me. Like, that sense of betrayal that one would have, it's just so good. Really good. And that, my friends, my buddies, my everybody's, is uh, it for Gateway to Geeks this week. Yeah! So, hey, 
like, comment, subscribe, do all of those things, and follow me on social medias, do all that kind of stuff, and until next time, stay gatesing, stay common writering, stay common writer geatsing.